We are live. We're not going live. We are live. It is Wednesday, 1.10 East Coast time. And what does that mean, folks? It means watching Amazon, and it means you get to talk to... Who are you again? I am the tax man. Welcome to Tax <laughs> Day 2020. The tax man cometh. That's right. It is cometh. It's here. All Today right. is well, tax day. I'm not the tax man. I'm Brent Leary. <laughs> there it is, folks. See, some things change, some things come and go, but I'll always be Brent Leary. And this will always be watching Amazon, where we watch a lot of stuff. Every week, there's a lot of stuff. This week is definitely no exception because it was just filled with a lot of stuff. Filled with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And I'm so glad it's like week two of the cold one, bold one, John Cole Rice Lawson new computer experiment. And it's working just great. Because he looks so good. I, I didn't go quite that far, but I'm, I'm just glad. all the way. It I'm just glad. <laughs> I'm just glad you're not doing the Humpty dance anymore or any of that other kind of strange stuff that was going on. Yeah. 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 You can give me the gas face. I don't care. Whatever. I truly just don't care. Anyway, so lots of stuff. Lots I of stuff. A ton. I lots posted a lot of stuff. stuff. Like uh, I posted a lot of stuff just over the past. Not relevant stuff, but lots <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> no, this is this is a this is a relevant zone show. This is nothing but relevance going on. That's probably not the best way to pass it over to him because he's usually not relevant. I'm so relevant. Do you want me to pop up? Uh, yeah, pop it up, pop it up, baby, pop it up. Okay, he's feeling so good since he's got that new machine. Yeah, I am truly, yes, truly. Man. All right, here, here it we is. go. This is what? What are we looking at here? What are we talking? FBA, about? Amazon FBA has sent out a letter to all of its third-party sellers, talking about the uh, unprecedented challenges that COVID nineteen pandemic pandemic has placed on all of its resources. And basically they are saying that since the uh, pandemic hit, it's impacted their supply chain around the world and we've all had to make adjustments, right? So after laying out that groundwork of how we are feeling your pain, they inflict a little bit more pain, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it depends on who you are, how you work, but they have something called the Inventory Performance Index, and on that index, it has a red zone, a yellow zone, and a green zone, and to be in the green zone, you have to have around, at the lowest, a 500% score. Now, mind you that this score is very arbitrary, and it really does not... Uh, correlate to anything other than, well, you, you can't figure it out. It's some kind of workings in the back end on inventory sale through rate versus how much you have in storage versus what they think are going to sell through in the near term and in the longer term. So at any rate, what they're doing right now here in July is they are ratcheting back and making sure that the inventory that's being handled through their uh, logistics center is going to be optimized for the holiday season with COVID. So, um, so they've sent that out, saying that you, you now your 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 minimum threshold is that 500. The problem, the, the only real problem, the real problem, okay, not even the only real. The real problem is is that the uh, people's items going into the system just in general, even on good years, go missing, go miscounted. You have no insight to what's going on. Things don't get reconciled for, you know, a long period of time. And they've made the system to create those uh, notifications to Amazon that something is wrong or to talk back to them after they notified you that something's wrong. It's just a clusterfuck. And so <laughs> we're going into, um, you know, a new holiday season with some old problems on top of that COVID-19, which is a whole new problem. So there you go. 
interesting. I hope I made that clear. Yeah, you did as you usually do, but that's good. All right, so um, I'm going to add on to that because there's, I think you said something about trust, you know, and being able to depend. Uh, trust that number on the IPI? Yeah. Oh, here's another number um, that just came across. Um, I, I'm to be honest, I don't know these folks. I don't know who Clutch is, but uh, I've seen this. What does Clutch do? It apparently, it did some kind of research thing here. Um, and what it did was it was basically surveying people to find out which uh, was their most trusted uh, package deliverer. And you know, they're all kind of bunched up together, but the I mean, UPS is is, is far out. Well, UPS and the Postal Service. That's not surprising. They've been doing it pretty much the longest. Um, oh, I don't know if UPS has been longer than FedEx. Well, FedEx is bringing up the rear. But Amazon is 22%. And uh, I was looking at this. I saw this on a bunch of different articles. And I, I want to find a headline because the headline is kind of uh, that this data came from is kind of misleading. If I can find this because I find it's like, okay, that's – you guys are playing games here. What is that? It uh, yeah, less than one quarter of customers trust Amazon the most to safely deliver. Pa- now you hear that, you see that number, and you're like, man, they must certainly suck. But it's pretty much in line with what everybody else is doing. Th- these headlines are made to you know to get you to look, and they try to really dramatize it. But in all actuality, Amazon has been. Yeah, what are they like two years into delivering to people's homes or something like that? They're not that far behind UPS and Postal Service, which has been doing it forever. I just find the way that this was positioned kind of misleading. I mean, you're you're talking about the actual clickbait headline, not the exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like they they didn't say, oh, UPS is is the best. They said Amazon has less than a quarter. So it's it was it was like a setup. No, it's a clickbait headline and pretty much standard for what was that channel again? But oh, uh, uh, it was like a news channel or something like that. It was like a news channel. Yeah, that's pretty like standard that. for a news channel. But they when you clicks. look at the numbers, when you just look at the numbers, what what do you think about these numbers? Forget the clickbait, but when you think of Amazon being at twenty two percent. Given the fact that they only have been really doing this on their own for a couple of years, what do you what do you say? What do you think of these numbers? What do you what stock do you put in these numbers? I mean, I don't I don't put in much stock into it. People don't trust carriers in general. So, <laughs> I mean, look at it. The best of the best is UPS with twenty nine percent. You know, so obviously between twenty and twenty nine percent of people trust their carriers. That's what I put into it. Well, I think it's. I guess it's given the choice. You got to. Yeah. You got to choose one of the f- five. Well, DHL. What the hell? What, what are they even doing here? Uh, well, most people don't use them. I trust DHL very much for my international shipments. Well, apparently two percent trust. Them, well, for your international. But right. given the given the choice of the five, there only two percent trust them. Uh, so it's given given that you have to choose one of the five. UPS is the first. Oh, I gotta pop this up because we missed her uh, last week. Gotta, gotta say hi. She's Listen thankful. to that sharp sound. That's right, <laughs> Meredith. We did it. I'm giving you a virtual high five because we finally disgraced him into buying a new machine. Yeah, so well, you we should have sent me some money. Well, that was. Uh, we'll just send. You then you could. Then you could claim. Your no, we claim victory because we didn't victory. have to spend a dime, and you got your uh, new machine. Uh, so anyway. All right, so, so yeah. no, what I'm saying, given that they've only been doing this for a couple of years, I think it's actually it's good that they're not they're above FedEx. I mean, considering that's what FedEx is known for doing, 100 percent of their business. Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she, now the, it would have been even funny if she said I sent it via Amazon and you didn't. Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm you Amazon or UPS. So I, I say for only being at this for a couple of years, they're actually in a really good position to move up. Everybody else, I think, is probably bait. It, yeah, their I, numbers are bait. I mean, whatever. What's to say at the bottom? I can't read uh, the title. Oh, it's percent of total respondents. So they had 750 
752 people in the U.S. took this survey. Clutch 2020 package that survey. No, package theft survey. So, I, you know what? Oh, so there you go. So that's part of it. Yeah, so it's a big part. They, yeah, do you trust to get your stuff? And, you Just know, Amazon. Without, without it being stolen. Well, and let's face it, Amazon drivers. I think everybody is on the lookout for Amazon drivers at this point. Uh, not um, as much as they are FedEx. Are you sure? Really? Doesn't yeah, because like I mean, here's the thing. FedEx stuff is overnighted in their mind, so they think it has more value. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and most drug dealers use FedEx. Well, I have no idea what the drug dealer scene is when it comes to I'm just telling, shipping I mean, that, the that's goods. Not scene. That's just, there's a reason for that is because of the fast nature of FedEx. They really don't have the time to go through all the packages. So that is why it's used more. I don't know if we're going to be seeing any commercials that say four out of five drug dealers prefer FedEx. No, but I'm soon. saying if I'm looking for a package that has value, FedEx is the one that well, well, see, Meredith is, is, see, this is nice. Meredith is picking a bone with you. She says that drug dealers use the United States Postal Service more than they use those others. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what the drug dealer scene is for shipping their parcels around the world. Yeah, yeah. So I will just leave it to you and Meredith to Yeah, me and Meredith out. for having this conversation. <laughs> so she trusts the United States Postal Service more. With the drugs. <laughs> no, she says I, wrong. I did. I did. It all I wrong. did it. Um, okay. But I mean, it's like you just think about uh, the whole thing. It's really just the, if I'm looking for a common thread through this, people just don't trust package delivery services carriers at all. And I think we're probably at a high watermark for trust because the more of these videos come in of people, I mean, how can you trust? The you know, uh, Amazon based on some of these videos, like the guy who just literally quit in mid delivery, just left the, the, the big truck sitting with the keys in the car, the, the truck running. He says, And I left a whole bunch of delivery. How can you trust that after you hear that? That's just <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Meredith, is, Meredith is really stuck on this drug dealer delivery thing. <laughs> <laughs> We better we better move along so that we can get some of uh, Meredith's opinions on some other things. Uh, so I'm going to take the lead on that. Let me let me get rid of this because I do want to. I have I have a video. You know I, I like to bring in the video clips from time to time. So this time around, Amazon just recently announced the Amazon Dash Cart, and I'm not even going to explain what it is because I've got this video to explain it. It's a, it's like a minute and some you know a little minute and a half or something like that. But it's a good video that explains it all, and then we will talk about how important it is on the other side. So, with all that said, bam, bam, bam. All right. 
Yeah, that was boring as hell. I yeah, hate it might have been boring, but I it was very, kids. very informative. Let me bring you back in. And and yes, yes, we are getting fancy, Meredith. Actually, you must have missed the last couple of shows because I've been doing clips for a while now. Just, just saying. But we're glad to have you back. All right, so the Amazon Dash cart. What do you think? How important is it? I think it looks like something my child would play with, <laughs> with his Legos. With his, <laughs> yeah, it looks stupid to me. I'm with Meredith. It looks stupid. Not only does it, I don't know. I, whatever. I, I mean, here's the deal. I, it's just, you know, I, I think it's overkill for something that could be so stupid simple. I mean, I shop at walmart's brand sam's club i use the sam's club app i scan my stuff as i put it in my cart and when i walk out the store my phone has a upc code or not a upc but a scan code on it the lady at the door scans that counts the number of items and i move on i mean why do i need a whole stupid cart for that it's just dumb let me tell you why I uh, beg to differ from you and Meredith on this. Have you ever been to an Amazon ghost store? Like, at, This is not a ghost store, store, though. I'm just telling you, have you ever been to a ghost store? But this is not a ghost store, but go ahead. Can you just answer the question, yes or no? Have no. you ever been? All right. No. So what's nice about those little Amazon ghost stores is they are meant for, you know, for convenience, go a quick in and out. You're not picking up a whole bunch of stuff. You're just getting a couple of things and you're grabbing it and go. Mm -hmm. They are creating a similar kind of experience in a grocery store for a grocery the place store. where I don't go to grab one or two things. That's the well, whole that's reason why it's dumb. That's why it's not as dumb as you think because it's as dumb as I it's, think. Trust it's me. a cart that basically is a cash register for a bunch of items. So you not don't have to wait and scan, get scanned from some little old lady on not the side. Bunch. That's you the just, whole problem. You just they have to push the cart, push the cart, put stuff in. You can even get your fresh produce. You don't have to get it weighed or anything like that because it's handled with the cart and you don't have to, you know, wait. For it. you know, sometimes you go to these stores, you do have a little weight, even if it's for like the last time I went to the okay, market. Here's the thing, Brent. In a little theory, cashierless place, it was a backup for the cashierless right. place. Here's the thing, Brent. In theory, it sounds great. In practice, it's absolute bullshit and it's not gonna work. How, how have you, how do you do that? Because you can how can I'll you say how, how can you say in practice? You. How, how do you how can you say in practice when there has not been any practice yet? I will tell you exactly how I know that. It's because if you go through self checkout <laughs> lane, I do like the little self checkout lanes lane started. Self checkout lanes had the weight thing on the scale, so when you scan something, it had to weigh based on that scale, and they turned that off because it worked so poorly. So now to put this in a dumb little shopping cart that only holds two bags worth of stuff in a major grocery store, who goes to the major grocery store and only walks out with two little bags of stuff? It's dumb. Right. So how long ago was that uh, that scale technology that they rolled out? I mean, it wasn't just last it week, was it? It sits there and nobody uses it. You got to give it they a shot. It off. You got to give it a shot. I'll give it a we, shot. We it's want crazy. we want I don't convenience. Think I need a whole cart. I I think you might if you. How do you know if you've never tried it before? You gotta yeah, try yeah. things out. Like I said, you, look, you don't. You just so you much, don't try things. It's I'm just, just so it. opinionated. Well, I am, but that's the point of the show, though. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give things a shot. I am. I'm just like you know. It just this one did not. You know, I'm here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the go experience. I don't think the shopping cart gives me the go experience. That's here's my the thing, Meredith. The shopping cart is supposed to remove you from those checkout because the checkout is done with your Amazon account in the in the shopping cart. You you're technically you're not supposed to have to do anything, but once you come into the store, you come in and your Amazon account 
app is scanned and then they know it's you. And then anything you put in the cart, it's immediately associated to your account. And when you walk out, everything you walk out with is immediately added up and charged against your Amazon account. So it's not the exact same experience as doing self checkout. Give no, it a chance. The, checkout, Give it the a chance. checkout actually happens when you put stuff in the cart. The checkout actually happens when you leave with stuff in the cart. Yeah. You because you don't you, you can put stuff in and then take it out and then you leave. You don't want that to be, you know, added because you initially put it in. It's it's a different kind of experience, but having gone to an Amazon Go store, I think they're trying to replicate that with, yeah. you know. And I think that's a good op, a good thing to try out. I am you not going to poo poo. I don't see this replicating that. But we'll see. You and Meredith are so negative. Just negative people. Yeah. And Meredith, I thought we were we we had gotten eye to eye here. Yeah. I mean, it's you know what, honestly, like I said, I don't my part I think my biggest problem is it only holds two bags. That's my biggest problem. <laughs> what if they come out with maybe this is the test case? I'm sure it is. And eventually it will it'll probably get bigger. You know, I mean it's it's basically you're scanning the thing as you put stuff into the bag. So it's the same experience. And then once you're done, you just it's it's it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I could oh, do that yeah. on my phone. That's all I'm saying. I don't need oh, a card. Yeah. You should just let me scan it with my phone like they do at you know Sam's Club and then walk out. But why would you need to do that if you've done you scan yourself up front and then no, you put so you're stuff missing, in? You're missing because you, you you need to go to the Amazon site and watch the video. That actual thing on the front of the cart, you scan the barcode, then put it in the bag. I didn't it's see exactly like if that's how it works or not. It's because not like when you so in the grocery store, you put something, you don't scan anything. You just take it and it goes. That's, that's the, because because you scan yourself why. on you the way it. in. So when you, you pick up something, it. no, I am going to explain it because you have never been to that ghost store. How can you, you explain it to me? It's science. I've I am a ghost store veteran. I've been to the example. I have the been through the experience. At the big store. I know what really happens in those stores. I get it. I have not been to the store. I've That's been right. to the display of the store at the big show in New York. I so you saw it. you saw the display. I was living it. I was in oh, there. God. Okay. Anyway. I was in the I was in the mean streets. Any of the, of the Amazon Go store. I'm not even gonna... <laughs> All okay. right, let's move on. You want let's big like dash cart. Woohoo! You want big? All right, I'll give you big. This one is big. big. Amazon debuts That's larger it. delivery trucks. What That's do you think it. about the bigger trucks? Putting, I think I actually no, I don't think I saw one, but I did see a, what seemed to be a sizable Amazon delivery. So what do you what do you make of these bigger delivery trucks that Amazon has? I mean, you figure that the bigger the truck, the more they're going to handle of their shipments. The, it's it's one of those last mile. The bigger the truck, the more things you can put in the truck to deliver all at once, right? I mean, yep, that's absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, that's huge. And you figure like this, that's also going to reduce the number of people that you're going to employ to do that. So now it's van size moves into truck size. So so this is another way to cut back on people, in other words. I don't know if that's – I think that's another way to optimize delivery. See, Meredith, you've never seen an Amazon truck, and I bet you've never been to an Amazon Go store, too. So yes. just say uh, that was just so wrong of me. Yeah, that was a long way to go there, bro. Long I know. Way to go. Sometimes you just got to take the long route. That's yeah, right. you do. It, it, and it's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> I was going to find – there was something I saw in here. Okay, so it says new and larger delivery trucks could, of course – enable Amazon drivers to deliver more packages more efficiently. Amazon is under pressure to make good on one and two day deliveries promised customers who subscribe to the Amazon Prime. Good oh, luck. look. You win. We're back here. Eh? We're back here, Meredith. Just, I like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this is, this is about, once again, this is so 
normal. Amazon is always looking for ways to be more efficient in getting us our stuff, right? I mean, that this is just another example of that. This last mile, they're they're doing the the air freight, they're doing bigger trucks, they're doing you know physical locations. This is all a multi-pronged approach to getting us our stuff faster and more efficiently from their perspective, right? That's simple and plain. I mean, it's part of the growing up phase. If everybody else is behind them when it comes to this, and this seems to be the important foundational aspect of how they built their business, how does anybody outdo them at this? Is there an opportunity for, you know, Walmart has certain advantages. Um, you know, they got all these different physical locations and they just started their Walmart plus thing, which we kind of talked about a bit and weren't too impressed by. But if the foundation of a successful e-commerce business is fulfillment and distribution and supply chain, getting people their stuff faster and faster and faster, how how does anybody compete with that going forward? I mean, people are competing with that, and you partner with those that do the same thing. I mean, there's partnerships that are going to appear with FedEx and UPS. Um, and I think that will, I mean, basically, my thing is Amazon keeps pushing the bar, but as they push the bar on package delivery and fulfillment, it also turns more into here's how unique our fulfillment is to very quickly becoming this is the baseline of fulfillment you know but it, does it feel like fulfillment is becoming i mean it just feels like fulfillment is becoming an even bigger part of the overall shopping experience as more people shop online based on going to bricks and mortar because of even with the pandemic that accelerated that. But it seems like commerce is becoming so much more dependent on fulfillment and supply chain uh, because of the always pandemic. Always been dependent on fulfillment. Yeah, but I think maybe because more people had been forced into buying stuff online because of the pandemic, it spotlights the importance of it even more. And that's that I mean, maybe that's, that's obviously yes, but I don't. Here's what I don't think I don't. I think, and this think about this I think the pandemic has also made us more aware of planning and pre planning as opposed to just off the cuff. Oh, by the way, I need this thing and go grab it, and Amazon will be here in two days. I think we are now becoming more of let's put this list together, make sure all of our, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's such a one-off experience, which is good for Amazon, honestly, and good for others because it was hard to ship that $3 battery pack by itself for other retailers. So as consumers are starting to bundle their purchasing because they're doing more shopping online, I think it, it actually, uh, makes it good for everyone As, answer uh meredith's question because i don't think we talked about this oh yeah no change what do you think what's what she wants to know what your thoughts are on that. I, I mean so you know the the story basically is that i think kroger's or one of the a couple of the major re uh, not retailers but grocers are not giving change back anymore they're giving you a card with change on it or you can put it onto your uh, 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 customer uh, loyalty card. So, because there's a shortage of change, and there, really, because, there's a shortage of change. Oh. Yeah, there's a shortage of change in the ecosystem of the, the 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 like the treasury has less change going through it right now because people aren't using money as much as they used. Well, to. they don't want to, you know, have to deal with change from a touch perspective too, but right. I just don't, I hate having like somebody giving me pennies and stuff. Oh, man, I know. Like, Who wants that? Right. So my, my thought is, is like, look, 
I was telling somebody, you know, they were like, oh, we're going to Castle Society. It's the number of the beast. I'm like, look, honey, <laughs> if you haven't prepared for the beast after all of these years, you are just dumb. I mean, we know that this is coming. We know this is coming. You need to prepare, right? So uh, who wants change? I don't want change. I don't want your dirty money. I don't no. want any of that. Give me the give me the chip in the hand. I'm fine with that. I mean, the debit card has been around for like 25 years at this point or something like that. I am you always want to have some cash on you just look, in case, and, but and, and, and Meredith, just between me and you, my my dealer actually takes the cash out. I thought we were past that. <laughs> Apparently not, folks. Anyway, moving uh, moving right ahead. You you wanted uh, you wanted big. You want to talk about big. Here's another big thing. What's a big thing? Here it is. Big commerce. Dude, that's public. huge. That's huge. Really? That that's a huge thing. Think? That's huge. Why is it huge? Tell us. Well, if you just think about who's gone public during this time of the you know, COVID, not a lot of people have. And for big commerce to choose this time to announce going public, it really just says a whole lot about e-commerce, one. Two, I think the infusion of cash with big commerce is huge. And the, and the really crazy thing, Brent, I don't know if you know this story. The first year I went to Australia, I got a, 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 a call uh, well, not a call. I don't remember how we reached out, maybe a Skype call or whatever, from the founders. It was just two guys that founded Big Commerce, and they're from Australia. And we had lunch that day. They called me up and said, hey, we, we hear you're coming over. We'd love to have lunch with you. And I got to meet the founders. That was nine years ago. And it's just amazing what they've done with that company over these years. And to see this now go from – where it was just an idea to go in public is pretty awesome too. So I'm really excited about Big Commerce. Congratulations for where they've been positioned. And it'll be interesting to see a secondary player going public in that space now. So uh I beat say you. what's up to An Anand 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 because yeah. Anand? How do I mean, you say we, it? It's Anand. I I'm totally in. There it is. All right. No, I think it's a look. I think it's a, an extremely smart move on uh, the part of Big Commerce. They're going to ride the wave. Nobody was really talking about them. Every everybody's talking yeah. about Shopify. No, nah, yeah. I mean maybe in your world, but I'm talking about like yeah. I mean, in Shopify reality. was the one. Shopify was the one that was getting all the heat. So it's a smart move to go public now mm -hmm. because the infusion because of it's cash. the infusion well, of cash. Well, it's it's just it's a it's 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 the hot area. And even though they're not really the hot player in the hot area, they're, they're in the hot area. So why not take advantage of it? Ride that wave. Here, now, let me tell you something. Yep. Let me tell you something about Shopify. All right. Not going to hate on Shopify. I think it's a great, great platform, but Shopify is only number one in your mind. And the reason why they're number one in your mind, not you per se, in the public mind is because they had that infusion of cash and they've used that to position themselves with marketing to make their name on people's lips. Having big commerce, getting that infusion of cash will give them and level that playing field so that they too can put their name in front of you with billboards and commercials and advertisements across social channels. You're going to see you're going to see a definite competitor come into the marketplace now. Oh, I, well, here's the thing. And I have no doubt that they will be successful. But this is also this thing called first mover advantage, first there person is. to build a brand, yeah. first person to really, you know, solidify partnerships. Yeah. And because they do all of that, they will be the big guy. And because e-commerce is an area that is just growing you know, rapidly and will probably grow even faster now because of what's happened, that means every all you know tides will rise. So even if they're not the big guy, they don't get all the you know the big uh, attention because they are you know as you said they are a, a good piece. It sounds like it's a good platform from kind of a technology standpoint. 
it's a good move for them to do this and take advantage of what's going on in the general industry with e-commerce. Um, not- I think they're already, see, that's what I'm saying. I, mean, I think you're missing my point on this. I think first, big commerce was there before Shopify was in its papa's balls. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. But- you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't even an idea at the time. Matter of fact, Shopify probably got the idea from big commerce. Big commerce actually has more uh, options with it. It's a much better platform in terms of open development. Um, so it really is the leader in that sort of, it's really one of the leaders. I'm not gonna say the leader, but it's it's definitely in there. The, the biggest difference is that Shopify used its money to market in a loss leader fashion. I actually think big commerce is a more solid company when it comes to profitability than Shopify is. And we're gonna find that out when they go public. Let's but put it like I this. Think, I think yeah. you're right. I, let's say you're right. I, I, I can't argue that. I don't know them as well as you do, but I could look at history, look at like the CRM side of the house and say Siebel was a much more profitable company and had been there for years before Salesforce. Right, right. But Salesforce came mm-hmm. out with this mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. about doing Salesforce automation in the cloud. Well, not in the cloud at the time. I forget. It was like a, it was an application service provider. And it was, you know, all that. But they came out and they, they branded, they marketed, they did their thing. And now that's something that we've been talking about in the industry. Salesforce has a bigger market cap valuation than yeah. Oracle does, which there's no way in the world anybody would have thought that even just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Because actually, Mark Benioff came out of Oracle. Larry Ellison helped invest in Salesforce to get it off the pe- off the off the ground. Right. That was when everybody yeah, was no, talking about like databases. Not even a close comparison. But I get your point. Well, let Shopify me know. <laughs> Shopify is not Salesforce. <laughs> I'm just saying you can't I'm, even you can't even point to one thing that's close to you know what I'm saying. It's just like well, hey, come on. I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say they there may be some more equivalent than you may think. Yeah, maybe because we'll see. Salesforce was nobody knew what Salesforce was that 21 yeah. years ago. Yeah, but I mean Salesforce is. Like I've said about Shopify before, man, like over 90% of the people that use the platform are not making money. I could, I totally get that. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say this. I don't this. think that's the same case with big commerce users. I think big commerce users are way, and we need to do a real study on this. This is very interesting. Let's, let's do a real study, but let, let me, really let me just. Cool, but it's huge news. Absolutely. Okay. That's and good. I don't but... want to. After saying all of that, because I know right. how people love to take clips, you know, but after saying all clips of that. Clips of us? Who's taking yeah, clips at of us? Point, we, are, we are that large. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, after saying all of that, Shopify and what they've done in this space is absolutely amazing. They're a great company. I love the people at Shopify. I don't know anyone but one. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I don't. I don't want to do that. But we're just talking about the difference. No, we're just. Yeah, we're talking. It, and it's. It's actually kind of fun to compare and contrast. But I'll say this: e-commerce is a much. Uh, I, I would say much more uh, uh, mature industry and category now than uh, when Salesforce first came out, because a nobody knew they- much about. Yeah, nobody knew what, anything about the cloud back in 1999. And and let's remember, CRM as a category was very young. I mean, people were still calling stuff like Salesforce automation, electronic territory management. There, it was a, a very nascent category. And so for a company like Sal- Salesforce to kind of take the opportunity to so- build it, Build the company and the category up. So let me do it because you said something. And I'm just like, it's bugging me here. So do you think that CRM is as mature of a category as e-commerce or not as mature? I think actually this is this is a 
a really good question. I hadn't even thought about it. Um, I would say that CRM as a software category kind of came evolved into that from the late eighties, early nineties, you had gold mine, you had act. And those are like for salespeople who are out on the hunt, trying to, you know, build relationships, trying to keep track of the contact information, all that kind of stuff. So it's been around longer than e-commerce has. Absolutely. But, but I think the, the real sweet spot of CRM probably didn't hit until Salesforce really found its stride and, and people started believing, wow, uh, yeah, you could actually do this. You can put your data in the cloud. So with that so saying- you can put your data in the cloud. Okay. So yeah. That, that's a big shift. That was the big See, aha moment. So here's the thing. I don't think e-commerce has had that shift yet. You, really? Yeah, I mean, wow. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think, yeah. I mean, I don't think people like sales is is part. Say, matter of fact, sales overrides every business. You know what I mean? In every business, sales is there, right? That's why it's been around forever. It's like, okay, we got computers. How can it help us make our you know sales team better? You know, sales is such a huge category. E-commerce. I think is is still in its infancy. Not well, maybe it's in its toddler years, but I think a lot of actual businesses have not made the connection between how online sales or how important online sales is to their overall top and bottom line. I just don't we think just, they made that connection. They're making we it. Just, we just gotta acknowledge the smoothness of Anon here, who actually find some way to compliment us both while put, putting us against each other's point. That is smooth, man. I have to give it to you. That's a good, that's good. I just had to go back to that. I was like, I, let me read this again. First I saw no, that. But, but, but you got to put Pierre up there too, because that's my boy. Oh, I, I already put him, up, I there. him up there. Okay, I was talking over it. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah so this, is, this is a very interesting conversation. I would say, man, well, the, the thing that would uh, maybe go to your point uh, is that stat that everybody still, you know, and it's it's a stat that we all should be focused on is the percentage of retail sales that are e-commerce. We're, we're still only about 12, 13, 14 percent or something like that. I think At we're approaching 18 now. 18. OK, well, we're stuck. I think this year is going to be a delineation point because yeah, of the is. pandemic. I yeah. think we're going to see a pretty significant a rise in that number and maybe that pushes it into a mature a more mature area yeah you know I, everything is so weird right now everything is so weird because I, I i don't know where we're going to be for christmas in terms of i know where i'm going to be right in this house <laughs> well I mean, <laughs> i'm not going anywhere <laughs> i mean our economy I don't know if it's going to be this robust, let's spin thrift Christmas that we've had for years now. Um, there's going to be some pullback. There has to be. I mean, there's too many people out of work that at some point it's going to run out. Uh, how many, you know, I just, I, I, it's very weird. It's, man, stuff is so weird right now. And nobody has a clue as to what's going to happen. Nobody. Nobody. You know, not even Bezos. You know? Yeah, Meredith, I agree. It is a crapshoot. It is. I'm just glad that we, we didn't say it's a like a, a bad drug deal because <laughs> I think we've beaten that one up for a while. Here. But I, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I've been fascinated by the Salesforce thing because remember – database software was like the biggest thing every every enterprise is buying that up for years and years and years then a couple of years ago crm surpassed uh database in enterprise sales and now to see salesforce pass oracle because oracle does everything oracle has you know database software enterprise first, software, right? no. infrastructure well who uh oracle, oracle? Oracle, well, Siebel was the first, and Oracle ended up buying Siebel mm -hmm. amongst a, a, a ton of companies. But Oracle has been around, you know, Oracle and Microsoft kind of go hand in hand in terms of when they were founded. Uh, database software, 
was one of the the drivers of the the, the PC industry. You know, you needed right, right. database. You, you needed you know. so to see Oracle does so many things and has tentacles in so many different areas of business, and to see Salesforce, which is basically a pure play CRM cloud business, pass them in overall market cap. That to me, that that's a that's a, almost a line of delineation too. That I don't know exactly what it says, and maybe Anon has a better idea of what that might mean. But it means something when a company that wasn't even around twenty years ago that was basically born in the cloud for CRM. So it's B two B. It's not B two C, which is a, a huger market. Um, when they're able to have a high, a bigger market cap than a company like Oracle. What's B to B? Business to business. No, Not I'm saying, what are you saying? B to B? Oh, well, they, they only sell to businesses, right? right. Yeah. So, so, so I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means. It doesn't mean a negative for Oracle, but I think it means something when a company that is a pure cloud CRM company has a bigger market cap and it's, and you know Salesforce is doing about 20 billion I think its annual uh, run rate is 20 billion or thereabouts mm -hmm. Oracle is way over that Oracle is See, that's what we talk about too and, and with Amazon it's pretty much a cloud based you know retailer and it's got yeah, but, huge but, huge yeah but it does way more than that I mean you know yeah well yeah <laughs> Meredith <laughs> I'm too old. Oh gosh, that's right. Well, that was a that was a thread that ran throughout the whole show. Yeah, it uh, did, didn't it? Oracle, what is he saying? Thirty nine point two, thirteen point two for Salesforce. Really? I, are you Edward? Uh, I just met Edward the last couple of weeks. He's a great guy over at Epic Server. I thought Salesforce's annual run rate was more closer to twenty billion at this point. Market right. value Salesforce is far more than yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's it's past them on the on the fly but um, yeah it's it's just it means something uh, and I'm gonna try to get some some opinions other than just my own yeah because, you know what all of that is so subjective it's of course it is but look you know, that's like we're saying betting on the viability of one company over another too I mean, well it's like Amazon's value compared to walmart walmart right. is, walmart is like oracle walmart is like oracle salesforce is like amazon and absolutely yes yeah. that's that's the way i feel too 26 percent. Right, th thanks i gotta I'm, you know what i'm gonna have to check because i i saw somewhere where the annual run rate is well maybe see i'm talking annual run rate which is based off of like the last couple of quarters and who knows? Maybe that's changed, but I'm going to look into it. Thanks, Ed, for adding that. Um, yeah, this, so this discussion, there's a lot going on here, man. We did. It's I have no idea how we even got here. Uh, I don't know either, but it's fun. It's a fun ride. And it's a drug-free ride, Meredith, right? So that's uh, another thing to keep, for in, some of keep us. in mind. For some <laughs> of us. <laughs> Hey, no, this is a, this has been a really interesting conversation. I, one of these weeks, I definitely want to talk about the uh the what what's that zoot there what's that company the the company amazon bought the uh autonomous car company we need oh, to talk yeah. about you that want to talk about the autonomous car company yeah there there is definitely something that uh, you know that that's that has a potential game changer feel to it as well um oh look at that meredith is is uh giving props to to our buddies like edward and Anon and Pierre and well, we, we had a nice group. But Meredith, mm -hmm. you've been number one. You came back number with a one. with a vengeance. With a bullet. Number yes. one with a bullet. We Tops. we appreciate Tops. that. Tops. And I, and Anon, we're gonna have to get Anon on because he he has some special insights in some of these areas that we just talked about too. Awesome. But yeah. all right, Zox. That, yeah, we got We got to talk about that. We got to talk and, about and, them. And I and I want to because that also can tie back into my uh, thing about the, the Hunger Games for billionaires, because 
Elon Musk. Did you see he passed over uh, our boy uh, from Berkshire Hathaway, Warren, Warren Buffett? In terms of value? Yeah, he, he moved he moved ahead of Warren. I mean, the stock has been moving like gangbusters, dude. It's like up to 9,000%. And I, I still don't exactly know why, but I don't either. But <laughs> there's a reason. I bet Anna knows. I, I'll have to ask. And there's you. a reason. I mean, I'm not buying the car. I don't need <laughs> a car anymore. I don't get it. I don't want. Well, I mean, shoot, we don't even go enough places right now to be buying new cars. That's what I'm saying. He's like, I had a friend that just bought a new car. I'm like, he's Maybe like, they got a really great you? deal. Maybe they got a great Actually, deal. Actually, they're not. He's and like it was helped. cheap because he could extend it. The, the 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 value of the car, the price tags are not going down, but they are making it more affordable by doing zero percent interest for guess how long? Six years, seven years, seven years. <laughs> I don't want to be paying on no car for that long because by the time you by the time you pay it off, it's worth nothing. Dude, I'm like this is ridiculous. You I can't even trade it. it in for anything. Uh -oh. And yeah, right. What's it going to be worth? Anyway, I just paid off both of my cars this month. I'm uh, it's, so you bought a laptop and you paid off for two cars? <laughs> well, that's kind of how I got to pay off the laptop. <laughs> that's the justification. Oh, you had to sell your car? <laughs> oh, you paid off your car so you had some money. To yeah, well, it's like, look, you know, we don't have that bill anymore. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Well, I'm just that's glad... Cool that we went through another show with no technical glitches that's like a record for us dude it's not that is the power <laughs> of a man oh god here we go all right well it's the power of us being done for this week we appreciate everybody that uh, hung out with us and, and a lot of great comments a lot of great information i agree Love with meredith all. a lot of and meredith you 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 really you became like the third co-host today we appreciate that thanks so, you. thank you so with that, we will see you next week because, you know, there'll be more stuff to watch with watching Amazon. Awesome. Peace.